In this lesson, I'm going to talk about how to use delegates in Visual Basic.net. I'll tell you what a delegate is, how to use one, and perhaps most importantly, why you might want to use a delegate. To get the most out of this lesson, it'll help if you're already familiar with coding up classes in VB.net. If necessary, you can find the essentials of object-oriented programming with VB.net in another series of videos. So, first of all, what is a delegate? Well, a delegate is often referred to as a function pointer. In other words, just like you can pass data from one program to another, a delegate effectively lets you pass executable code from one program to another. Another name for a delegate is a callback. Let's see a delegate in action. I'm going to start with a Windows Forms application. I'm calling it The Pizza Place for reasons you'll see in a moment. I'm going to mock up a simple application that might be used by a fast food delivery business, a business that sells pizzas or burgers or whatever. In the same project then, underneath my form class, I'm going to code up an order class to deal with customers' orders. Later, I'll move this code into a separate class library, which will help to explain why I might want to use a delegate. For now though, let's keep everything in one place. I'm going to include a method in the class which will calculate the value of the order. I'm implementing my method as a function, a function which returns a decimal value. The calculation at the moment is very simple. I'm passing in a quantity and a price as parameters and then just multiplying them together. Then I'll return the total to pay. Now let's call the method from my user interface. This is my user interface, the form class. In future, I'll refer to the order class as the back end and I'll refer to the form as the front end. So I've created an instance of the order class, an object from the order class, which I've called order with a lowercase o. Then I'm calling the calculate total to pay method of the order object and I'm passing it a quantity of five and a price of three. The result is returned into this variable, which I then output on the screen. Let's give it a whirl. So far, so good. No delegates here yet. Now I'm going to move my order class into a class library. I'll start a new instance of Visual Studio, first of all, so I can see the front end and the back end side by side. All I need to do is hold down the shift key when I launch Visual Studio and I'll get a second instance. And I'm creating a new project of type class library this time. So on one side I've got the front end and on the other side I've got the back end. Now I'm going to compile the back end. That's compiled OK. And in the front end, I need to create a reference to the class library in order to use the class within. And finally, I need to qualify the name of the class with the name of the library that it's inside. And I'll give that a try. Still working. Fantastic. We can carry on. So I have a working application now, albeit rather contrived, but here's my problem. What if I want to change the way I calculate the total to pay? Perhaps to include a discount or to apply a promotional code, or I might want to have a special deal like buy one, get one free, or buy three and get the cheapest half price, free delivery over a certain amount, whatever. If I can anticipate all of these possibilities in advance, then I can write the necessary logic into the calculate total to pay method, and I can ensure that it has all the necessary parameters. 
Alternatively, I could write several different versions of the same method. That is, I could write several overloads of the same method and then just select the one I need from the front end as and when I need it. But I would have to anticipate these various deals in advance. If I don't anticipate all of the functionality that I might need, then adding it later would involve rewriting and recompiling the class and rewriting and recompiling the front end. Ideally, I want to add new functionality to the class without having to change it. Well, that's exactly what a delegate will allow me to do. The behaviour of a class can be extended without having to modify the source code and without having to recompile and redeploy it. Let me show you how. I'll start by writing some functions in the front end to calculate the total prices of some deals. I'll start with a normal deal. Nothing special there. You pay full price. Let's give myself a bit more room to work with. And there's my half price deal. We've got the same parameters and the same return value, but I'm calculating the total to pay slightly differently. And let's have a summer special as well. And thinking about it, I could get the discount rate from the user interface. Let's put a text box on the form so that can be input. I've put a default value of 0.25 in there, a 25% discount. As you can imagine, I could use some very complicated logic here if I wanted to. I'm just making the point that I can apply a discount in any number of different ways. If I want to add another deal in the future, then I'll need to write another function here. But once I've set up the delegate, I won't need to make any changes to the order class. Now, inside the order class, I'm going to define the delegate. That's all I need here. It looks like a method definition, but it doesn't have a body. Notice, however, that it defines two parameters, an integer followed by a decimal, and it defines a return type of decimal. Any function I pass into the class using this delegate, or to be more precise, any reference to a function that I pass into this class using this delegate, must have the same combination of parameter data types and the same return type. In other words, the method signature of the function must match that of the delegate definition. The code won't compile unless this condition is met, so I can't use the delegate to pass anything I like into the class. This will help to prevent any problems that might occur if you try to do the wrong thing with the wrong data type. Delegates are therefore said to be type safe. Now I'm going to rewrite my calculate total to pay method. I've added another parameter which will allow me to pass in a reference to the function which I want to execute. Notice that the data type of this parameter is calculate total to pay delegate. I'm passing in the delegate, the function pointer. And the invoke method allows me to run the code which that function pointer is pointing to. That code expects a quantity and a price and the delegate is handing those values over to the function which it's referencing. Now, I could, of course, do lots of other things inside this function. For example, I could add a delivery charge. But this code has got nothing to do with the function I'm passing in. So if I want to change the delivery charge, I'm going to have to rewrite the class. 
I might do other things like give the customer some loyalty points. I might have code to write details of the order into a database. But this is the doorway through which I can effectively pass new functionality into the class. Let's give it a go. I'll need to recompile the class first. And in the front end, I'm going to need to create an instance of the delegate. The address of clause is effectively the memory address of the function that I want to pass into the class via the delegate. I'm going to calculate the normal deal. Now I'm going to call the calculate total to pay method of the order class and I'm going to feed it the function I want it to execute via the delegate. Along with the two parameter values it's expecting, a quantity and a price. So let's see if this works. Fifty-five pounds. Five times ten plus the delivery charge. If I want to apply the half price deal, all I need to do is change the address of clause. Fifty pounds divided by two plus the five pound charge, thirty pounds. And the sum is special. That's working nicely. There's another way I might have approached this application using a delegate. Instead of passing the price and quantity as parameters of the function whose memory address I also passed into the class, I could have made the data available via properties of the class. Let's try that. There's a quantity property. And there's a price property. I'm also going to include an order value property so that the result of the calculation can be stored within the class. Let's recompile the class. And in the front end, I'm going to assign values to the price and quantity properties of the order object. This means that the data needed by my calculate total to pay function is already encapsulated within the class. I don't have to pass the price and quantity in as parameters. All I need to pass in is the delegate. The method which my delegate invokes still expects a price and a quantity, but now I can give it the property values instead. I'm just feeding it the container variables which my properties are using. The delegate still defines the quantity and the price because these are parameters of the function that I'm going to pass in. Let's rebuild the class library. And now there's no longer a need for me to supply data here. It's already in the class. And that's working nicely. As I said, instead of returning the total to pay, I can make it available via a property of the class like this. In fact, if I'm going to take this approach, I could have declared the delegate to point to a sub-procedure rather than a function. In other words, a procedure with no return value at all. I would have therefore defined the delegate like this and the invocation of the program it pointed to would look more like a procedure call than a function call. I'm going to stick with functions. Now, it's probably time for a reality check. Having just one quantity and one price for a fast food order is unrealistic to say the least. If someone was really ordering a takeaway, it's unlikely they'd ask for five pizzas, and that's all. 
More likely, they'd want two large pepperonis, one with extra olives, one with anchovies, a medium margarita, some cheesy garlic bread on the side, and not to mention drinks. Capturing and storing the details of an order like this would have to be done differently. You could, for example, maintain an array or a collection of order detail objects within the order object. The order class would contain an add item or an add ingredient method, which would be called from the user interface. The prices of individual items could be looked up in a database as they were being added to the order, or later when they were needed to calculate the overall price. Exactly how you go about designing this type of application would also depend on how you planned to store the data that you collect. Typically, the classes of an application would reflect the structure of the relational database sitting behind it. That, of course, is another story. But one way or another, if you want the flexibility to change the way that you process the data you collect without having to modify the class, a delegate will let you do that. By using a delegate, I am now able to extend the behaviour of the order class without having to modify the source code and recompile it. Arguably, I still have to recode and recompile the front end if I want to introduce new functionality to my application. And this begs the question, why not just do the calculation at the front end and pass the result into an instance of the class when it's done. The fact of the matter is, you could develop a working application without using delegates at all. But imagine a much bigger distributed application, not necessarily an order processing system, but something else, in which instances of a class are running on a powerful central server, with the front-end code running on a user's workstation, maybe as a web form in a web browser. If methods of these objects have to do some particularly intensive processing, it makes sense not to do the work at the front end, where it might detract from the user experience. If we want all of the hard work to be done at the back end, and we want the flexibility to redefine the hard work quickly and easily, then it might make sense to use delegates. Furthermore, by taking this approach, we've satisfied a couple of key design principles of object-oriented programming. Firstly, the so-called single responsibility principle, which states that a class should be responsible for one thing only. In this case, the order class takes care of the order calculations. The form class, my front end, takes care of the user interface. Secondly, the open-closed principle, OCP, which states that entities such as classes should be open for extension, but closed for modification. This reduces coupling between classes, which makes it less likely that you'll introduce bugs when you make changes. In summary, it may be that you can write perfectly good applications without ever having to use delegates at all, at least in the way that I've suggested here. But perhaps one day you'll find that being able to pass a type-safe function pointer from one program to another is totally appropriate. In another video, I'll show you some special applications of delegates which can be extremely useful, namely in multi-threaded applications and custom event handling.